Welcome to sunny Portugal and welcome to the new GSX S1000 GX. Good morning from Portugal. We've just set off. This is day two of the ride. This is going to be a good day. This is going to be a 240 kilometer day's riding on various roads to really test this bike out. I hope we get on some nice flowing, twisty stuff because we, we had a little bit of that yesterday, but you know, it was still quite enclosed, not, not that open. I'm hoping we're going to have a bit more open riding today, but uh, I'm really excited about this. Based on what we learned with the bike yesterday, my, my biggest, I say concern, and it's not a major concern, it's, it's the tyres. I'm not overly impressed with the tyres. The, these Bridgestone Sport, I don't know, they're not, they're, they're the sort of the mid-range Dunlop. I'd like something a little bit more sticky for this sort of performance orientated bike. Look at that old longship over there, look. That's, look at that, that's gorgeous, isn't it? decent so we got a bit of coffee and uh, I've had my screen adjusted I had it in the upper position it, 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 it been 62 caused a little bit of buffeting on my helmet so I've asked the, my Japanese technicians to lower it into lower position just because it's, it's a bit less it's not buffeting sorry just a bit of noise and that will come through on the video more than anything else so screens lowered you know such a personal thing a screen you know if, if I think if you're under six foot on the upper position, it offers perfect protection. Also on the, the motor, we did some sort of 130 kilometre, sort of quite fast stuff. Surprising amount of protection to your legs. You know, you know all this all this sort of uh, profiling here, and your legs tuck in here, you, you know, I think if it was in the rain, you'd have really good sort of uh, rain protection, and it keeps that wind off your legs as well. So the actual weather protection from the bike is very, very good indeed. Can't get on from this side. I have to get on from this side. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, get my leg over. Oh, gets harder and harder to get your leg over as you get older. Well, unless your name's Mossy. Yes, you. <laughs> I look at a bee, but I don't like it, so stop it. <laughs> so it's now 20 past 10. A quick, quick custard tart and a, and a cappuccino. And we're on our way. It's actually warmed up a tiny little bit now. It was really cold earlier on. Actually warmed up a little bit. Bike says it's 21 degrees. It's not 21 degrees. But we're still waiting for some decent roads. Where's the decent roads? Ah, I can see some mountains ahead. So if we've got mountains, you know what comes with mountains? Twisty roads. What we got? B mode, super hard suspension, traction level four, maximum preload. She's set for the twisties. I mean, with that front end, I haven't quite figured out how, how's best to ride it, whether to brake on the front like a full-on sports bike and you know tip into corners or to tickle the rear brake before going into corners like it's more of an adventure bike. I haven't decided with how that how it what it prefers. I think today we're gonna find out. It's very agile, it, it does change direction really easily, you know, because it's got what bars are wider than the uh, the GT version and it's got you know it's a nice wide bar and it just does tip in you know the front end feels really nice it tips in beautifully you know it's, it doesn't feel like a heavy bike it feels you know nimble it feels light it's not a heavy bike 230 kilos for this type of bike it's actually pretty decent so, and it and it feels limp, but it feels light. You know, it turns in beaut it turns in really nice. The front end feels, I think, better than the rear. Perhaps. I think the front's really nice. But my confidence is, I think, more to do with the rear end and the rear tyre. So, I think it's down to that rear tyre. But as as you know, as it's warming up now, the sun's on the roads. I'm gonna start pushing it over a little bit more today. <laughs> so, 
these sorts of roads where there's a little bit of dirt or there's, there's quite a lot of sand on the roads and you're never sure you know how much these bends suddenly tighten wow look at this you can see all the dust coming off the tires and stuff as well i mean the, the, the roads are pretty dirty i don't think we'll be getting any yeah grit everywhere there look. i don't think we'll be getting any uh knee down today <laughs> Wow, look at that. That's incredible. Twisties. When it says it's twisty. You know it's going to be twisty. Got <laughs> plenty of ambulance waiting here for us. That's good to know, thought of everything. They knew you were coming, Bruce, they got the ambulance there already. <laughs> Go off that cliff, they're going to have to trip <laughs> Yeah, it'll be a bit more than the ambulance there, dude. This is where we're having lunch. Look at this. Oh, look at that sea. Should have bought my bathers. Fishes. That's your lunch, Mossy. you got to catch them. Yeah. Uh, where did... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a big fish, yeah. It's <laughs> so big. Fish. 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 It's not too shabby, this, is it? Bribery. Pure bribery this is. GT GX. Which one are you taking? That was lunch. So for the ride back, what I've managed to do is blag the premium seat. So we're going to test the premium seat on the ride home. So Simon did have it. You still got a premium seat. Oh, I've got a new premium seat. We've both got premium seats. So this is like a dual compound, dual materials in there, a softer and a harder foam. It does feel a little bit harder just to push like that. You've also got the uh, stitching, red stitching, obviously the logo, the contrast. It's nice, doesn't it? Hoping on the way home we're going to get some more twisties because I don't think the route we've had over this last two days has really showcased what this bike can do. We've not had that many twisties. Where we have had twisties, they've been sandy. You know, not, not very confidence-inspiring. And I think it's a shame. It's, it's as I say, it's just not showcased the bike properly. So, you know, we'll see what this way home's like. Hopefully we get something a little bit little better. The tyres are definitely not helping the situation. Everyone's in agreement. All, all, all of our little UK journalistic group, not, not a fan of these Dunlops. They're the middle of the road Dunlops and they're OE rubber. You know, they're not the best tyres for the bike, unfortunately. And again, it hasn't showcased the real potential of this machine. Must have had about seven gin and tonics last night. It was all Simon Hargreaves' fault. He, he, at four o'clock, he said, who's up, who's up for a post-ride gin and tonic? And I was like, yes, please. So, yeah, so we started about 4 p.m., went to bed at midnight. So, yeah, had a fair few GNTs. Mossy entertained us with his tails. The thing that man gets up to. He, he's a funny individual, Mossy. I love the guy. He, he, Mossy and uh, Bruce from Fast Bikes nearly had a fight. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was all kicking off. Neves, he went to bed. He, he didn't even come down for dinner. He went straight to bed to write his piece for MCN and then went to bed. He missed all the shenanigans. But, uh, yeah, it was a good night. It was a good night and we've got another night tonight so that it's going to be cocktail night tonight so oh god gin and tonics is my new favorite beverage I'm, I'm well into my gin at the moment mother's ruin mother's ruin not neat obviously with tonic but anyway <coughs> enough of me uh, drinking antics back to the bike yeah traction control four that was really 
holding it back then when I was trying to open it up because the, tra the traction is linked to the to not only traction obviously the traction control is linked with the wheelie control and I've got it on traction 4 and that was really holding it back then so I may actually dial that back a little bit in a minute <laughs> get a chance on one of these roads you just can't guarantee they're going to be clean so you go bombing around like this and you've got to think well I've got to really stay in the lanes the cars use because in the middle of the road it's dirty so you know it does make it a bit more tricky you know again it's not really showcasing what the bike can do but that on that with the tires combined makes for a bit of a, a lack of confidence saying that I want to turn the traction control down to one so we can play with the lift control a bit more reduce the lift control look at that over there <laughs> you don't want to go over the edge though looks like somebody has and what's that horrible line down the middle? Is that diesel? <laughs> this is why we need to test this again in the UK. Some proper tyres on. But, I mean, it's not all about that, is it? You know, it's not all about how fast it can go around the corner. Can you get your knee down on it? Who cares about that, really? You know, 95% five, of the people buying this bike won't be buying it for that reason. They'll be buying it because it's a, a well-priced, comfortable sort of touring motorcycle and it does that very, very well. This electronic suspension brings that extra sort of level of comfort to the ride, an extra level of plushness. I mean, Suzuki's sort of standard suspension, let's call it, is normally pretty decent. They set it up well for the majority of riders, you know, but it can be a little bit more budget at times and you know if you go on faster stuff more severe sort of potholes you can sort of push through the damping and it can get a bit crashy you don't get that on this i mean this is like super comfortable and for suzuki's first sort of effort at doing electronic suspension you know that shower system they've used is sort of a proven system as well i think they've done a very very good job you know, they've tried to build in a lot of their own unique features like the speed dependent stuff you know all of that so i mean this is now a serious serious machine for instead of buying a an adventure bike you know this is a real competitor for the s1000xr i mean that has been updated for next year i think the xr is more sporty uh, it is slightly more sportier edge to what this has but I'd say this is more comfortable than the XR. The seat can be a little bit locked in on the XR. I know for 2024 they've addressed that, they've changed it slightly. You know, but the current 2023 bike, you were quite locked into it. You know, this is more comfortable for sure than the XR. The suspension setup can go extremely comfortable on this, you know, almost like ridiculously wallowy. There's, there's a really good range of travel between comfort and firm and even in the firmest which of what I've got this it's still fine now it's not too firm perhaps I'd like it to go even firmer still would be one of my sort of few criticisms of this but again for the money fourteen and a half thousand pounds it is a bloody good bike I'd like a little bit more drive but once you're used to it you're used to it you know, and you have got an incredible blast of the 150 horsepower, 108 newton meters of torque. You know, it's got the power, but you to, to exploit that, you've got to get it over sort of 6,000 revs, which we, we haven't really done that this this large because we've not had the opportunity. So maybe on this ride home we will. Something else I would change, but I'd, I'd make I'd give it adjustable foot pegs. My old K8 GSXR's got a two adjust you know two positions you can have the foot pegs in i don't know why manufacturers have stopped doing that you know 
Why have they stopped giving you adjustable foot pegs as standard, you know, adjustable height? Yeah, you want a bit of down clearance, but, you know, if you're not going to be laying it right on its side, you might prefer the foot pegs in a slightly lower position. <laughs> My K8 GSXR's got it. Why ain't this got it? You know, a lot of manufacturers will want you to buy their aftermarket, you know, their... Last. A lot of manufacturers want you to buy their, you know, accessorised rear sets, but I don't think Suzuki do any, so give us some adjustable foot pegs to standard. It's pretty easy to do that. It's also a shame they've not used the new GSXR VBT engine to build this machine. You know, I get it, I get it, they're building it to a budget, but you know, they're not having to develop a new engine, that engine exists, just get it for Euro 5, a bit of basic retuning and you've got a 170 horsepower engine to chuck around, you know, and that is a great engine, that VVT lump. When I heard this bike was announced, I was, I was really rather excited because I thought it was going to be the ultimate machine, you know, a bike you can do track days on, obviously not in the fast group, but you could do a track day and it would be able to do it and you'd have fun a bike which was very comfortable you know so you had that electronic suspension gave you the options to have it really firm and also have it really comfortable and the ergonomics of an adventure bike but with a sporty chassis and a 17 inch front wheel you know that to me sounded like the best bike ever you know i think these crossover machines are fantastic the xr i mean i love the xr you know so the Tracer, I haven't ridden the Tracer, but I know I'm going to love a Tracer because I love that CP3 motor, you know. Just that sort of bike makes a lot of sense. You know, especially the state of the UK roads and the Portuguese roads as well, by the look of it. The bike has come very close to delivering everything I wanted. There is more of an emphasis on comfort than sport. Fine, you know, that's not what everyone wants from a bike. You know, it's not as sporty as the XR, it's, it's more comfortable, but it has, you know, it's 150 horsepower, it's, it can do it, but everything is a little bit more comfortable, everything is a little bit more easy. You know, the power delivery is smooth, but, you know, I guess you could say it's not particularly exciting, the power delivery. But I think you could do a track day on it, change the tyres, you could do a track day. So I think it has delivered on a lot of those uh, sort of expectations that I had you know may, maybe not all of them maybe not all of them but uh, but I'm a person who doesn't do massive mileages you know so for this sort of bike it probably makes sense to have more of an emphasis on on comfort than uh, out and out performance it would be nice the fact that it's got the IMU it's got this sophisticated brain to isolate traction and wheelie because you know it's, it's easy to do that when you've got those electronics and that IMU so you know and all of the new bikes do even the Tracer does that you know most new machines you can isolate traction and wheelie certainly in this segment you know the premium litre bike segment but uh, you know you can't traction and wheelie are still tied together which is a little bit of a shame but again 99% of the people riding this bike won't care about that. They won't be interested in pulling wheelies. But it would be nice to turn you know, the wheelie control off so you can have a bit of fun with the front coming up a bit, but leave the safety net of the traction control. I guess this is quite real world coming to Portugal, though, isn't it? Because you've got poor roads, you know, you've got different sorts of surfaces. So it's a, it's a good testing ground, I guess, actually. You know, even though I've moaned that, <laughs> or, or I think most people on this launch have probably said the same as me, you know. Who would have liked a few more twisties to really push the bike to its limit, you know, to see how it handles right on the side of the tyre to get that feedback we wanted. You know, a combination of the tyres and the surface. But, you know, I guess it's real world, isn't it, this? Very real world. It's like a night, you know, it's very similar to the the road surface in the UK is probably better than what we got in the UK to be fair but you know it's sort of representative of not the perfect road surface so it's a bit more real world I suppose coming here we stopped to look at Jesus Christ there he is 
Not my joke, I've pinched that. <laughs> we had Nevesy, we spoke to earlier on. We oh, blimey. To Rossi yet. We've had Nevesy on the launch. We've well, got you've... press royalty. Uh, it's literally press royalty. And I'm just, I'm just a mere and, surf. And me, and I'm just, me. I'm a humble surf. <laughs> I'm nothing compared to them. They're, they are the gods. Behave. We all know you're the god, mate. So what are your thoughts? Well, you, you, come on. You understand? You're, you're below Jesus Christ, dear. Don't Look you at him. See. Look at him up there, waving at us. All right, mate. Yeah. So, oh, there he is. <laughs> So, what were your thoughts on the bike then, mate? We've had a couple of days riding it. It's been I think interesting. It's, a, it's been interesting. Yeah, yeah. We've had it was, yesterday was kind of a bit stop and start. Today's been a bit more kind of consistently riding on motorways yeah. and a bit of twisty country roads. It's been a bit better, um, but it's taken two days at least to understand the bike. Yeah, yeah, a to understand all the electronics and B to get under the skin of it and really yeah. kind of understand what the bike's about um, because it is pretty complex. I don't think it's more complex than, say, I don't know, S Thousand XR with all no. the Carlos yeah, Fandango yeah. stuff. Yeah. But um, but because it's Suzuki's first, it's a bit like, oh, Suzuki have got technology on their bikes. Wow, <laughs> yeah. you know. it's, um, it's got an IMU. And yeah, everything. it's got the whole yeah, lot. Yeah. It's semi-active. <laughs> so I think overall, I think you know, it is Suzuki, Suzuki's versus. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where it's aimed. That's yeah. what it does. It's a fairly obvious sort of platform after the Thousand GT. Yeah. Stick it on some longer legs. Same engine, same frame. Um, just to suit the bigger rider, the more adventurous rider, the guy who wants to ride a bit further, perhaps, yeah, you know, in yeah. a bit more comfort, bit stretch more comfort. out a bit. a bit more comfortable than the GT. It's a shame we're not be able to try the GT, actually, today. I wouldn't mind of having a back-to-back, -back just to yeah. one little blast You'd, you'd probably it, feel it was a lot more compact, yeah. a lot more yeah. scrunched up. I mean, this is 845 mil seat. Well, I, think, I think the leg position's very similar, though, isn't it? The, well, the rear set position's the same. They're, they're yes. That way, but the seat's a little bit higher. The seat's so, a little bit higher. But so it still I, feels quite tight in the leg, doesn't it? It, it is tight. I would have liked a little bit more in the leg if it's not. Again, it's a compromise. It's not an adventure yeah, no, bike yeah. leg angle, but no. it's not as it's not quite as cramped no, as the GT because yeah. the seat is a bit taller yeah. relative to the pegs, I yeah. think. Um, but uh, and you know, and the engine is what the engine is. It's you, like I said, you don't come here looking for vibes and charisma. You come here for an inline <laughs> four that goes yeah. blooming fast. Yeah. Um, and it does bang a bit. Yeah, it, it goes, does. doesn't it? it? Does go, when yeah. You, open you it wind up. it up. We've had that many opportunities to open it up, but when you do, see, it's interesting, it isn't goes. it? See, because you do have to wind it up, yeah, and it yeah. is a bit like a clock in that you have to sort of go. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Then, it goes. then it goes. Whereas a lot of modern bikes today, like the twins and some of the triples, like Tracer 9 GT, you don't have to wind that up no, at all. You have to throttle and it, it's there. Yeah. Um, but overall, you think it's good? You think that yeah, I do. For it's, the, it's, it's good you know, and bad things about it. It's good and it's bad. It's not the perfect bike. It's but not, there isn't no. Many it's it's a nuanced thing. I know everybody wants to sort of have a like, it's good or it's bad. That's it. I'm not interested yeah. in the nuance. But it is. You've just got to pay attention. It's yeah. a bit more complex than that. But I think it's landed in a sweet spot. I yeah. think it's 150 horsepower, which if you want more from your tall rounder, you've got to go BMW yeah. and you've got to spend more money. A lot more money. It's, um, what was the other thing? Yeah, it's cheap, it's cheap. Yeah. It's, you know, so it's about, it's less than the Tracer 9 GT. That's its biggest rival. Yeah. But to see the Simon's full review, oh, of yeah. course. Yeah, have uh, a crack onto Bennett's. Uh, Bennett's bike, so Bennett's bike social. 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 UK. Yeah, have a look at that. And you'll uh, find, out you'll find I've said something completely different. Well, back at the hotel, we finally, the last, 20 minutes of the ride, we found some smooth tarmac and finally managed to really put the bike through its paces. Unfortunately, the camera ran out on the helmet, so two days riding a bike, only just managed to find some decent, smooth, clean tarmac to actually push it and push it over on its side. And yeah, it handles. There's no problems there with the handling. All in the hard mode, flying bends, you know, really nice. Get it on its side. You know, the tires aren't ideal, I you know. If I were to buy one of these, I'd swap these tyres out for something a bit more sporty, but that's just me, because I want to be a bit more sporty. But yeah, it's a really good bike. It's really impressed. It's sort of connected with this bike now after these last few days, and uh, I think it's really good. I think the biggest competitor to this machine, though, is the GT version, as I mentioned. How's it going to stack up against the things like the 2024 XR? I don't think it's going to be as sporty as the XR. It's down a little bit on power, it's similar weight, but I think the XR will be a sportier, bike but this could be a bit more comfortable this is a very comfortable machine that that's one of the main uh, standout features of this bike i think comfort ease of use and here comes a car comfort ease of use performance you know those are the three things really which stand out with this bike it would be nice if it had a little bit more room in the leg as I've mentioned multiple times, you know, why can't these rear sets be adjustable up and down a little bit? My old K8 is, 
you know, the bar position's nice, the, the upper body position is really nice, but it's a little bit tight in the leg. If you're a big tool bugger over six foot, you get, you're gonna notice it. The seat's a bit taller than the GT, so you have got a bit more leg room than the GT version, but it still feels a little bit tight for this sort of bike. You know, you can't stand up and ride and take a bit of weight off your ass because you know, your bars are low. It's not like an adventure bike for doing that, which is a bit of a shame. I perhaps would have liked things to be a little bit taller even than what they are. But this definitely is an excellent machine. You know, it's, I think, met expectations. I thought this was going to be good, and it is good. You know, for Suzuki's first attempt at electronic suspension, I think they've nailed it. And it's got a massively, there's a massive range of adjustment, and you can really notice it. Sometimes on these electronic systems, you go from soft to hard, and you think, well, I think I can tell that it's changed. But this, there's a de definite difference between soft and hard. So. Um, yeah, for a first attempt at electronic suspension, I think they've absolutely nailed it. And uh, it's a great bike. I will be riding this again soon in the UK. So we're going to... I've actually see, asked if I could get a long term of one of these. I like it that much, so don't know if it will happen or not, but it may do. But we're definitely going to do a comparison with this and probably the Tracer 9. But uh, yeah, it's an excellent, excellent motorcycle. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Come on, man, just walk on by. Walk on by.